Welcome back to Build a Mobile App in Two Hours. In this session, we're going to continue what we started earlier, where we created the new space trip data, and now we're going to continue building out the rest of the screen. So we worked on the data in the first session, and we created the form to be able to enter data so that we have the name field. We're going to continue on and set up the calendar, and then we're also going to create a button to let us move to the next planet. The button has a number of behaviors. It will validate our data, it will allow us to continue to the next screen, and then it can also store our trip info. So let's go ahead and get started. We ended our previous session by dragging and dropping the name into the form and it created a form field for the name and it created the save button. So let's start by updating the save button and changing the text. So we don't really want it to be save. Let's say continue to select planets so that they can move to the next screen and choose the planets they'd like to visit. Now we can see that our button is red because it expects that it can be clicked as an event and it doesn't know what to do. So it needs an event handler to go ahead and deal with that. So we could try to create one in the properties. If we double click on the button, we see that it creates a continue to select planets on click and that's now the action that or the behavior and the logic that will execute when that button is pressed and in this case it has an automatic piece of logic that will validate the form information so it'll try to make sure that the form is filled out properly and if it's not it will go back and set some warnings and if it is it will move forward and in this case, when we say move forward, we could be storing the data. We'll wait to do that for later, but we do want it to be able to finish what it's doing and go to the next screen. So if we go to the toolbox for the action flows, there are destinations. And if I drag and drop a destination over the end, it will tell me, okay, you want to go to one of the destinations, which screen would you like to go to? Now we're going to be going to the Select Planets screen, but since that doesn't exist yet, let's just go back to the dashboard and the home screen. All right, so now our button is set up, and if I go back to my previous editor, it opens up the screen editor, and the button is now blue. Now our button is skewed to the left, so although its behavior is better, I'd like it to be able to fill up the whole area of the container that it's in. So there's a little handle on the end of the button and I can drag that and you can see in the background it shows the number of columns that are available. So we'll just make it take up all of the columns. And we'd like from the name the user to be able to enter the date and not have the button be in the way. So we'd like to move the button to the bottom and here we have what is called the bottom bar in the bottom area of the screen. And this is for navigation. Since while you're in the wizard trying to create a new trip, we don't want you jumping out to some other part of the application. Let's delete the bottom bar. Let's click on our button and you can see the button ends up with a little blue tab which is actually a handle. And if I grab the handle of the button I can drag and drop the button down into the bottom area. And now it takes up the whole bottom bar area. So up top, inside of the form, it has a margin to make sure that everything looks good and it's not too close to the edge of the screen. So now we have our button, it's in a good place, and we have what we need as far as behavior. So the last thing we want to do is be able to have a calendar to select the dates. So if I start searching, here I can see the calendar and I can drag and drop it to the content area and it sets up the calendar. The calendar gives us a warning and in this case an error because the handler, uh, sorry, the calendar also expects to have a handler. 
So when someone selects dates inside of this calendar widget, the calendar widget expects a handler to do something with that. So if we go into the handler area, we can either choose what is already existing, but this action is the behavior for the button. So we would like a new client action, and here we have an empty client action. So once we've set dates in the calendar, what we'd like to do is assign those to the variable that we're going to use to store things later. So this assign can get a new name and we'll call it set dates. And when we click on the set dates assignment, it's really just assigning one value to another. So if we come over to the properties area, what we'd like to do is get our variable that we want to hold this. So the local space trip variable has a departure date. And then if we look at our calendar on select action and I expand it, we can see that it has an input which is a start date and an end date. So the calendar is able to provide those. So if I go back to the assignment, the value that I'd like to give it is the start date. And then for the next variable inside of the assignment, I'd like the return date. And you can see the departure date has a little equal sign saying it's already been dealt with. So I can choose return date. And then when I ask for the value here, I can select end date. And we'll close out the expression editors. So now we have both of the dates that we need assigned to the proper variable. And if we want, we can go back. And again, now the calendar is blue because it's happy with the behavior that it needs when someone has selected the dates. Now our calendar has updated its event handler, and we can see the start and end date have been added, which are nice. But one thing that we want to be able to look at is that these types of widgets, or we refer to them sometimes as patterns, have lots of extra properties that we can set one of which is a min date. And if I come into the min date, I could give a particular time to the minimum date. Well, inside of out systems, there's a default local, um, a default capability that gives us the current date and time. So let's select that because we don't want people trying to start their trip in the past. And at the bottom, it says select interval. So we're going to set select interval to true because select interval will make sure that there is a start and an end date. So we'll be selecting two dates. Sometimes we could set the calendar to only bring back one date and then that would be fine as well. So we now can enter a name. We can enter the calendar dates. It will assign it to the local variable and then the continue planet, continue to selected planets will validate that. So the only thing we need to do is be able to get to this screen. And at the moment, if we go to our main flow, the only screen that we end up on is the, the dashboard or home screen. And in the dashboard or home screen, we have this new event button. And in the new event button, if we look on its on-click handler, all it's doing is going back to this screen or the current screen. So let's go ahead and change this and update it so that it now goes to the new space trip wizard, new space trip screen. So that will get us to the screen. And then we know that the, the new space trip screen is going to let us enter the data and then take us back to the dashboard. So let's publish this. So it's still working on deploying and there we go, it's done. Let's go ahead and click open in browser. And we can see the splash screen. Again, our app has been updated. Pin screen will go 1111. And here we are on the dashboard. To get to our new screen, we should click New Event. And now we have the ability to type in a name. We'll call this the Mars Trip. We can select some dates. And then we can click Continue to Selected Planets and it was fine. So everything worked the way we expected. Let's go back and do another event and we'll select some dates 
but let's not put in a name and click the continue to selected planets. So here the validator has said that this is a required field. The name was mandatory and we didn't set the name so we have to set some sort of name and here we'll go the Venus trip and now we'll be able to click to selected planets and we're back on the dashboard. So this has allowed us to create the dashboard screen to get things going. Next we need to work on the selecting planets screen and creating all of the data to be able to do that. So join me in the next session where we'll start focusing on the planets, their screens, and their data.